Well now, on my scintillating book, Money Tips, I think this is going to be number three in the order that I'm going to put it in. I think that's going to make some sense. Now this one is going to be a long one, so you're going to have to stay awake, pay attention, and I need to get going myself. I don't want to be too charming. I just want to get moving on this. Now this is money tips and how to beat the system. Also talks about the courts and the law because, you know, if you get messed up in them, that's going to cost you a lot of money too. So this is how to save money there. Now, this is, I can't cite this, but I would say maybe 25 years ago, I read something in the LA Times that was an eye-opener to me. They said that our court system, at least here in Los Angeles, was so backed up that the criminals had to do about four or five crimes before they would actually see any jail time. Because... Like I say, if you got 10,000 spaces to put prisoners and there's 20,000 miscreants, that's bad boys, you can't put them all in the same place. You can't put them on top of each other. Although some of them are like that, you can't do what they'd like either. So now listen. They do four or five major crimes. Not major, but you know, like something pretty serious before they actually... It's like the fifth or sixth time before they actually start going away. Now, I'm not saying to do any of this. I'm just saying I'm telling you how the courts and the law and all that work. You know, in the movies, everybody gets caught, but in real life, they don't. Or if they do, they just get suspended sentences or, you know, parole or probation or community service. Or, you know, they help granny across the street a couple of times, and, you know, boom, there goes their sentence. I think even I could do that. So, that's the first part of it. And, you know, and again, I just say, this is something like, you see in the movies a million times, everybody gets caught, and, you know, Columbo's going to get somebody. It doesn't happen. I mean, let me tell you this. Yeah, I've seen television shows, real ones, you know, like they have all these reality shows on crime, FBI files, forensic files, all of that. I find that kind of interesting. I see a lot of detectives coming on or FBI agents and they'll say, look, we, you know, you can't beat us. We're so smart. We put all the resources together. Let me tell you a fact. You take any or any city in the United States and their homicide, look at their homicides, say 500 for the year. Chicago is now up around 800. They lead the way. But you take most major cities, three, four, 500 homicides a year. What's the solve rate? Half. So if LA has 400 homicides in it, you're gonna solve about 50% of those, which is 200. So I say to you detectives and FBI agents, you're a little bit off because half of the murders in this country, they get caught or the perpetrators get caught. The other half, 50%, don't. So it's all propaganda that you see on TV. Believe me, everything is propaganda. Everything. They're selling you products. Everything. They're, you know, business politics, religion, everything is a prop propaganda uh, enterprise, except me. But anyway, uh, that's the point I wanted to make. You have it maybe ground into your head that every crime committed is going to be caught. No, they're not. And even if they are, they're treated with kid gloves in many times, unless it's your fifth or sixth offense. Not saying to do it, I'm just telling you this is reality. And so, now, now I'm going to tell you, so if you're going to do something that's a little bit shady, I'm not saying, you know, killing people, or robbing banks, but I'm just saying you're going to do something that's a little bit, you know, uh, kind of out there. 
in the gray area. There's two main things that I can tell you. If you would just listen to these, these two alone is worth a hundred times the price of this book. I'm telling you. The first one is, and this is what sinks 80 to 90 percent of the prisoners that are in prison. Keep your big, fat, dumb mouth shut at all times and always do whatever you're doing by yourself, solo, Napoleon Solo. Now, let me tell you, that's the big right of any defendant. You know, people, I've seen all these shows, and, you know, I like them. They're, they're interesting to me. Forensic files, FBI files, there's, you know, True Crime, Crime 360. I mean, I think there's 500 of these shows. They're easy to do. You just get some guy up there and you say, okay, here's a bunch more crimes. But all of these people that are caught and they're questioned, they just blab away everything. They tell the police everything. And they have these little tricks where, you know, they say to the guy, well, man up. Don't be a punk. Man up. Or, you know, the, the family has a right to know or whatever. They play you, boy, like a sucker. If you, whatever you've done, if you just keep your mouth shut at all times, this is the big right of all people in the United States. If you just keep your mouth shut, you won't incriminate yourself because all the time you're talking, you think you're getting out of something, you're incriminating yourself. You, you're creating a timeline, right? But they're going to hang you with that timeline because now you pinned yourself down and you can't get out of it. So somebody pulls you over, let's say a cop pulls you over in a car. All you do is you sit at the car with your hands up on the wheel and you say nothing and you ask the officer, never get out of the car either. It's a good way to get shot. He thinks he sees, you know, a gun in your hand. Wait at the car, the cop comes up, ask you, ask him what you've done. If he wants you to get out of the out of the car and do a light pat down of you, that is permitted by law. That's certainly fair. A light pat down, make sure you don't have any machine guns or flamethrowers, you know, hidden in your pants. Then I, you could stand there or whatever, but whatever he asks you at that point, you just say, well, I'm not going to talk anymore because I have the right to remain silent. You don't just have the right to remain silent after you've been pinched. You have the right to remain silent at any time when you've been pulled over. He's going to say, you're making me mad. You're making my partner mad. I'm going to say, well, that's too bad, but I'm exercising my rights. You're just going to have to get mad. You're going to say, well, we want to search you in a more uh, physical way, not just a light pat down. We want to search your car inside. We want to search your trunk. We want to go home and search your house. We want to search your office. We want to search your shorts. Most likely they won't find too much in there, if you know what I mean. But anyway, we want to search your tree house. We want to search your dog. You say no to everything. They'll say, well, we'll just bring the dogs out. You say, bring the dogs out. That's only good in drugs or, or weapons, possibly. If you got something else in there, it's not going to register. They have to have probable cause to go in there. So what have you done? You never allow any searches, never cooperate. You never speak to the police at all, before you're arrested, during, after. Never speak to them, unless you're uncommonly intelligent and very aggressive. So, and that lets out most people. Don't do it. That's the big right you have, and that's what keeps you out of prison. But all of these other guys, I see them all the time on these TV shows. They open their mouths, they hang themselves. I'm glad they do it, by the way. They did the crime and I'm, you know, they killed somebody. I'm glad they blab away, but I'm just telling you, if you're doing other things that aren't quite like anywhere near that bad, keep your mouth shut. 
to keep your mouth shut, they have no evidence on anything. They have no timeline. They have to go out and develop something. And good luck with that. I'm telling you, nine times out of ten, when you talk to the cops, they're going to develop timelines and they're going to develop people and they're going to develop, uh, you know, as I said, people, they're going to find people to question. And then you, with all of that, you're going to be hung. But if you say nothing, they got nothing. Remember, Billy Preston, nothing from nothing leaves nothing. You got to have something if you want to be with me. So just keep your mouth shut and you're ahead of 95% of the people in this country. Can't express that enough. So that was that point I wanted to make. If the partner gets mad or they get mad or the chief gets mad, he says, you're going to have to get mad, son. I'm not giving up my rights. So then they're going to bring in, you know, detectives, the big closers. Same thing. I'm exercising my rights not to talk. I don't care if you bring in 20 detectives. I'm not saying anything. I don't know about you if you're a weak sister, but believe me, they could bring in 50 guys. I wouldn't say anything. They <laughs> Try it sometime and see how much I talk. Uh, just again, you're not going to say a word. Uh, let, me, let me tell you something else. You probably don't know this. It's very important. Back in 1969, there was a Supreme Court case called Krupp versus Frazier. Might have been Frazier versus Cup. In any event, that went to the United States Supreme Court, and it was determined that a law officer at any time could law could could lie to a defendant. That what that means is they can bring in some guy that says, "Oh, I witnessed you do it, and I have a video camera here." And we got five other nuns out here that they all saw you, and they're willing to swear to it. We got closed circuit TV, and we got DNA, and we got fingerprints of you. So, I mean, you a cook boy. Why don't you just admit it? He said, no, I'm not saying one word. Because everything he just told you could be a flat-out lie. The courts have determined they can lie and trick you. They can do if they talk to you for 10 hours, every single word out of their mouth can be a lie to trip you up. This is very important to understand. In no other arena is that people allowed to lie to you with the blessing of the court. They can lie, 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 say, and then try and pin you down and get you into you know, trying to save yourself. They say, oh, your partner just said you did it and you killed 10 people. And you say, well, wait a minute. I want to get my side on here. No, that was all a trick, all a lie. Now you're blabbing away. No matter what they tell you, keep your mouth shut at all times. Doesn't matter. Supreme Court says the police have a right to trick you any way they want. Keep your big mouth shut. Another thing you need to do when you're being held at the car or in custody, you, are, you need to keep asking, am I free to go now? Because they'll say you never expressed the willingness to go, so you wanted to stay. I guess you were, they thought you were falling in love with them. So you every 15 minutes or so just say, am I free to go now? So that's another thing. This is going to be long, but I have to put it all in one to, you know, get it all in there. And so, it's, well, another one, like lie detectors. Lie detectors you never take under any circumstances. Why? Because lie detectors are right 80% of the time, roughly, and they're wrong 20% of the time. So I would say to the policeman... Look, you want me to take a test that's 80% right but 20% wrong. Now, what if it's I get the 20% wrong one, but I'm now still branded. I'm branded by it, even though it's wrong as the, uh, as the doer. And that's my reputation in the community, and it's all wrong. So, no, you don't take uh, lie detectors are faulty. 
One out of five times. You don't take anything like that. Never. They want you to, they have these voice analysis things where you speak, don't do that. They have these, uh, you recreate the scene with the t detectives going out, don't do that. Don't do anything to cooperate, nothing. You won't be considered a good guy, who cares? You're saving your life. Let them be mad at you, don't cooperate. They wanna search anything, they wanna search the bottom of your toe. You say no, you got to get a warrant for that. And let good luck getting a warrant. If you just just follow this, just clam up and say nothing. I'm telling you, you'd be way way ahead of everybody else. Now, there's another thing that goes on top of that. It's very very important as well. You, whatever you do, now I'm I'm not talking about murders and bank robberies. I'm just saying you're out on the edge there a little bit. Uh, you understand that. Always work by yourself. Never work with any partners. Why? Because they're going to sell you out in two seconds, even though you've known them since the third grade. They're going to come back and get nailed on something. They're going to say, oh, I know some guy that was involved in this thing five years ago. And there you go. Oh, you're going to get a knock on the door from this miscreant not a mystery ant, it's a miscreant. And he's going to say, well, you know, we did that thing where we, you know, heisted a couple bottles of pop, and now I'm going to need $5,000 from you uh, to keep my mouth shut. So now you're getting blackmailed, aren't you? Never do anything that requires more than one person, and the one person is you. You might come along to me and say, well, now, there are certain things that require more than one person. I agree with you completely. You don't do them now. Period. You always keep your mouth shut all the way through. Don't cooperate. No lie detector test. No searches. Always work alone, and I'm telling you, you are going to be golden because you're not giving them all the things they want that they can start working on, like people's names and timelines and where you were. They say, well, I was at Taco Bell at, uh, you know, 4 o'clock. They go to Taco Bell and they talk to everybody there. Now they're developing witnesses from what you think is just a casual little thing. No, it's not casual. They're, they're making a big deal out of it. They're, they're talking to everybody in Taco Bell all across the United States now. This is how they get their start in a case, by you, with your big mouth. So, again, keep your yap shut unless you're exceptionally intelligent, which means keep your yap shut. Now, what else is there? Uh... That's the main thing I wanted to say on that. Those are the big two right there. No matter where you are in the thing, you just know. I'm not saying one word about anything. Nothing. I don't need an attorney because I'm not going to discuss whether I'm talking or not. I'm just exercising my constitutional rights not to talk, period. No conversation. I'm not talking. I'm not agreeing to the search. People agree to those searches because they don't want to look like they're, they've got something hidden. So they think that's, you know, smart. But no, that's very dumb because a lot of times these cops wouldn't be able to get a search warrant based on what they have, the information they have. They have to show a probable cause, if you've heard of that. They may not have it, but you go... Uh, can we search your trunk? You go, uh, oh, yeah, because you don't want to look like you're holding out. Then they search your trunk and they find, you know, nuclear missiles and, you know, plastic blow-up dolls. and That's a combination that can really put you in trouble. So whatever you've been told or seen on TV, never allow any searches of anything. Not even your tree house up the lake. Nothing. Let them get a warrant. Never talk. Never have a partner. Be mum. If you keep silent, they will have nothing to develop. 
And like I say though, and that's the one thing I just want to emphasize before I cut this one off. All the courts, including the Supreme Court, which is the court, says they can lie and lie all day long. They can take 10 hours and every single word is a lie. They can dress people up as priests. They can have people trot in and say they got, they nailed, they have fingerprints there of yours. They have your DNA. It's all a lie. They say your partners, which you shouldn't be working with, your partner's, you know, giving you up, and uh, it's all a lie. It's lies, lies, lies. They are sanctioned by the Supreme Court to lie nonstop, endlessly. So, I mean, really, out of self-preservation, if you're talking to people that are allowed by law to lie to you minute after minute, hour after hour, why would you talk to them? I mean, it really doesn't make any sense at all. I'd say, no, I know you people are sanctioned to lie. It's okay with the Supreme Court, and I'm not going to do it. I'm exercising my constitutional rights. If you think you can build a case, you're going to have to build it without my helping you put me away. Because that's all you're doing when you're talking, is you're helping them put you away. Lie detector test, that's a joke. They're, they're wrong 20% of the time. Oh, and all those search warrants... Show probable cause. That's what you're there for. Don't make it easy for them. You'd be surprised. All the people that are in jail now that said, oh, yeah, open up my trunk. That's the only way they, those cops were going to get that trunk open if the guy's a, a big enough nimrod to say, yeah, go ahead and do it because I don't want to look like I'm guilty. No, if they went to a court, uh, they may or may not get that uh, warrant to get in there, but they may not. And so you drive off free. Never cooperate on any level with any of this. You're not being mean or belligerent. You're just protecting your rights. And don't do anything too bad. I'm just saying, you know, kind of that marginal gray area stuff that, you know, a lot of us might have done. But there's never any cooperation with the police. That's it. That's a big, important part, and no partners ever. Don't do anything major. Don't do anything with guns. That's a complete loser. You're a fool. You're going to walk into a liquor store and hold a gun on somebody, right? Now you, you may kill him, he may kill you, or you're going to get 10 years for an armed robbery, and you get $50. What's an easier way? Don't take the, if you're going to do it, I, I wouldn't say do it, but if you're going to do it, don't take the gun in with you. Walk in there with nothing. And then you just say, hey, will you get me some cigarettes? And then he turns around to get the cigarettes, and then you just make a lunge for the cash register, grab the cash, and run out. Now, I'm not saying do that, but what's the difference in the two? One is an armed robbery, which could get you killed, or give you 10 years in the pen. The other one is just a, a grab and run with no guns involved. And what are you going to get there? Six months? A year? It's the same type of robbery. The money's going to be the same, but the method you're using is so much less, you're going to be in a lot better shape. So before, if you're going to do anything on the wrong side of the law, you might as well sit down and try to think. You know, maybe it's hard when all these things are going around and round in circles on you. So you know what I'd suggest? Put a big kettle on your head and then take a good think under there. I saw that on TV once. I don't remember where, but take a good think under that kettle there. Keep all the distractions out. And there's so much easier, smarter ways to do everything in this life if you could only think about them a little bit. So keep your head under that kettle, and maybe in that darkness, uh, maybe some, you'll come up with some good, you know, uh, ways to do things. But I always do it the gentle, easy, smart way. Always keep your big mouth shut. And now I'm repeating myself, and I'm going to kiss this off. We're coming up to 25 minutes. Oh, boy, that's too much. But I think I have covered a lot of stuff here. This is an important one. So, boom, we say goodbye. 
don't do anything too wrong. I'm just talking about some of that shady stuff. You know, like stuff that falls off the back of a truck or, you know, this or that. Don't go anything big and major. Don't hurt any people. Even if you don't care about that, you're going to get major time. So, you know, try to just... Try to be a little bit intelligent about your your bad behavior. These points I'm giving you, they should keep you right on that track. But you got to be able to comprehend them and then follow them, which, you know, uh, Pavlov's dogs seem to be able to do it, but uh, I don't think we have any Pavlov's humans. So uh, I think the dogs are ahead of us on that. Most humans can't follow, uh, you know, two instructions, let alone ten. But that's two big things, actually more than two. I uh, talked about the cops being allowed to trick you. Be aware of all that stuff, and if you just master what I just told you, you are 98% ahead of everybody else because other people just don't know this and they just blow it right and left. They're talking to the cops, they're getting the search warrants, they're doing polygraph tests, they got five partners and all five partners are digging their grave for them. If you could just take away what I told you in this tape, you'd be a master criminal alone if you could just memorize what I just told you here. And believe me, and remember, I don't say tell you everything I know I just tell you some of the stuff I know. But uh, anyway, try to, you know, get a, a grasp of what I've told you here. This is very important stuff. Okay, bye-bye for now. And get that kettle on your head and take a good think under there.